Hello. Um, I'm Pastor Sandra Carlson Alexis from First English Lutheran Church in Baltimore, Maryland. This is our sermon only part of our worship for Sunday, September 13th. Uh, we've just learned that stuff happens when we're trying to upload our, uh, our recording of our in-person service that's held outside on Sundays. So this is uh, the best, you know, the plan B, I guess. This is the plan B. So our reading for this coming up Sunday is Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3, assorted verses. We begin with chapter 2, verse 4b. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now, the serpent was more crafty than other wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the food was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Gospel of the Lord. So I want you to think and just sort of imagine, you can close your eyes if you want, imagine you're in a lush green place. The temperature, a perfect 72 degrees. There's a cool breeze and there are fruit trees everywhere. The air is filled with the scent of ripening fruit. Can you imagine it? This is a garden with no coronavirus or any other illness. This is a garden without joblessness or in inequality or debates. There are no problems, no political parties, no Congress. Just an idyllic garden setting. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's a tree in the middle with fruit that you can't eat or you'll die and a crafty serpent who's trying to get you to eat it. See, even in the perfect sounding garden of Eden we can tell that it was doomed to fail because at some point someone was going to eat the forbidden fruit and at some point someone was going to listen to the serpent it was a ticking time bomb this creation story from Genesis 2 and 3 is not about a perfect place it's a story about problems waiting to happen because people are always pushing the limit. We want more. Did you ever notice when you go to the store and you have 15 items, you want to go in the, the aisle that says 12 items or less? Why? Because you want to see if you can get away with it. Why do we drive 55 plus in a, or 60 plus in a 55 mile per hour zone? Or why? Can't you stop thinking about an elephant right now if I tell you to make sure you do not at all think about elephants? We're just a rebellious people. We don't like to be told what to do. Paul understood this clearly in Romans chapter 7 when he said, I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. 
Wanting something we can't have and pushing ourselves to what we shouldn't do causes a lot of problems in the world we face today. And I'd have to say the majority of headlines in our newspapers are because of that. Someone had an affair. Someone else was convicted of a crime. We give in to our obsessions, our addictions, our compulsions. We too easily listen to a crafty voice that tells us to go ahead and eat the fruit. We deserve it, or at least we would deserve more. And someone is trying to keep us from it. Welcome to the human race. We cannot look at these verses from Genesis 2 and 3, though, and blame what the man or the woman in the story did. It's more of an allegory of our story. It's what we all do, all of the time. We want what isn't good for us. We don't listen to the voice of authority that cares and loves us. We want to know more than we should, and we fall short of what God created us to be. We can, however, take steps back toward the world God intended. Any attempt we make to go back toward what God created and the world that God wanted us to have is taking a step in the right direction. But it's not easy. It's a little counterintuitive. It's like anti-human nature. Humans were created out of and connected to the ground in order to till the earth and care for the plants and animals. As we see more climate-related fires and hurricanes, we recognize we have not done this. We have not cared for creation as we should have. As of Friday, nearly 7,000 square miles had been consumed by more than 100 major fires in the United States. 23 people have died. Hundreds of homes have been destroyed. The World Wildlife Fund reports animal populations have declined 70%, 70 percent, seven zero percent in 50 years. We can't blame Adam and Eve for that. That is on us. But by closely reading Genesis, we are reminded that God's plan was for us to recognize our relationship to the earth and animals created by God. We were supposed to take care of them. Let our eyes be opened to the ways that we need to reduce pollution and create and protect habitats for endangered species. Another way we fall in short is in our connections to each other. In Genesis 2, the woman was created from the man, just as the man was created out of the earth. Before that forbidden fruit was eaten, the man and the woman were considered equal. They seemed to get along just fine. Today, we don't really have that kind of relationship with other people in our world, do we? We're so divided. We can't agree about how to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. We can't agree about how to vote or which football team to root for or if they should even be playing football right now during the coronavirus. We can't agree on whose lives should matter or if the best pets are cats or dogs or even how to eat an Oreo. Genesis opens our eyes to the ways we need to build up community and connections. We need to, instead of looking for the differences, find ways that we can be called together. We need to listen and share stories with people who seem different. Again, the point in Genesis was connection. And we, we've lost that to some degree. But perhaps the most clear place where we have fallen short is in our connection to God. It was God who breathed life into the nostrils of the he first human being, the earth creature, Adam. It was God who created a woman from the rib of a man. It was God who first created these relationships that we have. But eating that darn fruit caused the prototype male and female to see their nakedness, to see their shame, their brokenness, and they wanted to hide from God. Even though we often call this story the fall, it has elements, though, of hope and mercy. God did not cause the, the two humans to die immediately when they ate that fruit. And God continued seeking them even when they hid 
God still wanted to be in relationship. And God's mercy is also found at the end of Genesis 3, when the Lord God sewed garments of skins for the man and woman and clothed them. Yeah, those fig leaves were not going to stay on forever. So God the creator became God the tailor. And he fitted them for clothing. I love that image of God sewing clothes together so that the man and the woman would be covered, which was something that they needed at that time. So aware of their needs. The lush green garden of harmony and unity is one our nature rebels against. But the call of the faithful is to strive to recapture the relationships that God intended for us to have with nature, with each other, with God. We can push limits sometimes. We can push limits for what we want and what we claim, disregarding other people and other rules. But we can also challenge ourselves as people of faith to push the limit of our compassion and care. Give more than you thought you could. Listen more than you thought you were able to. Let's try to reconnect. Amen. <laughs>